Yes, we are live now. Hi everyone. Hello. So we're in Tunisia. Everyone here. Okay. Wait a minute. Can you see the screen? Screen can't see. Okay. 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 Hello. Good afternoon, everyone. If you are watching the live, just tell us. Just comment below. Plus one or hi. So that you are watching us. They help us to like and share ah, so that more people can discuss together lah about this topic. Hello, testing. Can hear. Hello, hello, hello. Yes, very good, very good. I can hear you. Okay, hello. Thanks everyone for joining us ah. So comment hi or plus one if you are watching the live. Okay, just to let us know you are watching, and help us to share out lah. Help us to share out so that more people can discuss together. No, ten people. Okay, shall we? Okay. Okay. So yeah. So everyone, again, once again, thanks for joining us today. Okay. Today topics about our heel spur and our tactics, huh? So hi, Mr. Ben. Hello, hello. Thank you for sharing the your knowledge and topics about this, huh? So a brief introduction. Ah, Mr. Ben is our founder of Ben Fisher. It's ah founded since ah two thousand thirteen, oh. And then, ah, uh, Mr. Ben is our is a senior physical therapist ah uh, for a lot lot of years, thirteen, twelve years already, right? Yeah, so twelve years. Of, yeah, not so that old yet. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so excited to yeah. Thanks for sharing the topics. So we are actually ah、uh, giving out ah、uh, one pair of free Zine Foot Orthotics today, right? Yes, yes, it's ah、uh, worth two hundred and sixty. Oh, two hundred sixty. Yep. Okay, so、yep. stay tuned with us, ah.、Uh. So comment, comment below, and ah、uh, say hi or plus one so that you know you are, you are, you are watching. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah, also share, stay. Share out. Hmm. Stay tuned. Yeah. Stay tuned. Okay. Hmm. So today topics ah、uh, is about ah、uh, heel spurs. So from the research, it says forty percent of the human population is having this kind of problem. It's quite a huge percentage. So how it up to, form、mm. up to? So how it form? Ah,、uh, how how can we fix it? And is there a solution for it? Ah,、uh, so I leave to Mister Ben to share with us. Okay, sure. Hold on, ah,、uh, testing. Hello, hello. That's my that's my slide move. Yep. Okay. Ah.、Uh? Hmm. Okay, so let's 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 start. Okay, so again, thank you, Azan, Exai, thank you, Trimax. Okay, for sponsoring the one pair of this uh orthotic for today's uh winner. Okay, <clears throat> so my name is Ben. Hi, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so go to, today we're going to talk about heel spur.、Eh? So just some correction. So actually, according to research, ah,、uh, it's up to forty percent, forty percent of human population. Ah,、uh, the research was done in two, then, ah, two thousand fourteen. Okay, up to forty percent. Um, average it depends of the age categories, ah.、Uh. So age of ah、uh, twenty and above is about ten percent plus. Okay, and ah、uh, age the as the age goes, okay, the the heel spurs, okay, is a lot more bigger. 
can you uh, okay. make it like full screen of the slide? Can, can. Yeah. Okay, yeah, uh, yeah. can see. All right, okay. Okay, but one very interesting fact. Okay, there was one very interesting fact. It was done by this American Academy uh, of Orthopedic Surgeon. Out of 20 people, right? Okay, who has heel pain, only one has foot pain. So that means what? Out of 20 people, right? Have spur confirmed, uh, you have spur in your heel. You only there is only one who has pain, who is complaining of pain. Okay, so it's a bit weird. How come up to 40 people have heel spur? Okay, but and how come only out of this 40%, only, only one person of the 20? Okay, that means what? Out of the 40%, only 5% of the 40 has foot pain. Okay, there are a lot of times we go and see a doctor, okay, or some clinician, okay, so they will tell us, oh, okay, so from the x-ray, yes, you have a heel spur, you have a spur there. So somehow that frightened us. Okay, the reason why I'm here today is we just want to tell you, take it easy. Okay, don't get panic, don't get frightened. Reason, only one out of 20 will suffer foot pain. Okay, but of course, if there is a spur, it's telling you something is wrong. All right, okay. So now, okay, today's topic, heel spur, right? We are talking about two heels, uh, two spurs, sorry. Okay, one is a calcaneal spur, okay? One is uh, the Achilles spur. All right, so later I'll, I'll tell you all, everyone, okay, about this. Now, before we go into spur, so let's see first why spur formed, okay, in our heel. All right, now, first of all, congratulations, everyone. Okay, if you have spur in your heel, in your feet, congratulations. Okay, why I say that? Okay, because you're still alive. Okay, because you're still alive. All right. Okay. Why I say that? Okay. Human is a living object. Okay. Everyone agree. Yeah? So when there is an injury onto any parts of the body, okay, it will heal. Okay. Make sense? So, okay. So if there is an injury onto your skin, it will heal. Heal with new skin. New skin form. New skin comes up. If you get burned, you get a heal. Okay. You get scratched, it heals. Okay. If there's an illegal injury, it heals all right of course ligament heals slightly slower but at least it heals okay when there's a muscles injury it heals as well correct or not okay as long as we are we are a living object okay if there's a bone injured it heals as well okay it heals with new bone all right so therefore if there's a spur spur in your body you should congrats that good you are not a zombie you are still living okay so human is a living life all right so that's why when there's a spur strikes you, do not get panic, okay? Do, do, not, do not get panic because why? It's just telling you that you're still living, all right? Healing process is taking place in your body, all right? All right. Okay, so now we look into uh, normal anatomy, yeah? okay? When we look into uh, bone healing process, right? Basically, there are four, sta four stages or four phases, okay? Hematoma. Okay, careless formation, second stage. Oh, sorry. Okay. Sorry, second stage, inflammation. Third stage, careless formation. And fourth stage, bone remodeling. Okay, now over here, right, if you can see uh, from stage one to stage four, right? So what you can see is the healing of the fractured or the uh, of the injured bone. Okay, they form into a new bone. Uh. If you look at the first slide whereby there is an injury, and the fourth slide whereby the injured on the heel uh, on the bone already heal up okay it heal up heal back to the uh, to do a new bone okay now if you look at the x-ray itself same thing okay the first when you had a, a fracture okay bone 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 injury so there's a fracture and then the second x-ray third x-ray and you come to the last x-ray side so you can see your bone heals already okay the fusion between the injured part already fuse up okay now from the diagram around here, right? What do you see? Okay, look at the bone that you heal uh, after heal. Uh, we look at the fourth, fourth uh, X-ray. Uh, the bone that healed already healed uh, is will be slightly bigger in size. Okay, it will be slightly bigger in size, but this is normal. Okay, so this is normal. So bear in mind, this is the fact. All right. Yes, when there's a bone injury, bone heal, new bones comes in, but 
your bones may not 100% same size with your previous bone, okay, before injury. All right, so it depends. Okay, so next. So now, why bone spur happen? Okay, so actually the bone spur is a repetition. It's a repetition of these four processes. Okay, it's a repetition of these four processes. Okay, so when it injured, it heals. It injured again, it heals again. And the whole process keep on repeat and repeat and it happens on the same spot of the bone. Okay, repeat and repeat. So from the age of 20 and repeat, heal, injured, heal, injured, repeat until age of 30, 40. Okay, which is about 20 years uh, down the road. All right, now the heel bone will, same spot, huh, will become slightly more thickened. That's how we say it already, ma. Okay. Shuhei, can you see uh, the screen? Yeah, okay. Okay, yeah. Uh. Okay, so if you look at the fourth x-ray, right, so you can see that it will be slightly enlarged compared to the previous one. Okay, so imagine if the whole process keep on repeat and repeat and repeat, what will happen to the bone? It will be slightly thickened, okay, slightly more prominent. Okay, and this so-called thickened or prominent bone, a small chip, sir, we call it spur. All right, in, China, in Mandarin, in Cantonese, we call it, call it guat chi lah. Okay. So, everyone understand why there is a spur? Okay, number one, when there is a spur, congrats, you are still living. Okay, you must say thank you, grateful, okay, blessed. Okay, number two, when there is a spur, it's telling you that the same spot has been going through injury and healing process. The same spot of the bone has been going through injury and healing process. Okay, so next, proceed. So again, when we look into spurs, right? When we look into spurs, all right, it does not mean it happens on the heel only. All right, different body parts also have spurs, and different body parts which contain the spurs, we name it differently. Okay, so you want to say something? Oh yeah, those who are nah. watching uh, can comment, plus one, plus one, and share out, share out. Yes. <laughs> Hold on, uh, just give me one second. Okay. Yeah, we have, if you all have any question, you can just comment below. Yeah, throw out yep. the presentation. Yep. Okay, so it's first happened on our back, on our backbone, over our spine. Either at the neck or at your either at the neck or at your lumbar bone or your low back bone. Okay, so the bone spurs at the back we call it spondylosis. Okay, so uh, on the right on your right. Okay, so on the picture on the left. Okay, so we call it a cervical spondylosis or lumbar spondylosis. Again, it's talking about spurs. So again, if you have a spine spurs, do not feel bad. Okay, congrats that you are still living. All right, but it's just that too bad. The same healing process, injury and healing process happen on the same spot on your backbone. Okay? Alright, so, so it's telling you something is wrong. You need to take care, take care of it. Alright, now same thing if the spurs happen on your shoulder. So therefore, it will give you shoulder pain, right? So again, okay, so I, I congrats you first because they're living. Okay, it's still a living object. Okay, but at the same time, it's telling you something is happening wrong. Okay, in your shoulder. Okay? Next, if the spurs happen in my knee, which I think most of the, uh, a lot of people are having it now, right? Okay, so it happens on the knee. So this one I call it knee pain. Okay, or another word we call it osteoarthritis. All right, now how, how, how about if the spurs happen on our hip? So we call it also osteoarthritis of our hip. All right, so again, whoever have a knee x-ray, hip x-ray done, and your, your doctors has been telling you that, hey, you're having a spurs in your knee or your hip. All right. Think twice, okay? What Ben says today, okay? Ben congrats you first for having bone spur. And then Ben also explained to you already, spurs is just telling you that it's a matter of repetition. Same spot having injury as well as healing for the period of time, okay? So how about spurs happens at my great toe, all right? So in, if spurs happen at a great toe, in another word, we also call it banyan. 
All right, now some people's banyan because of the movement of the bone. All right, some people's banyan looks bigger because of the spurs. All right, so it depends. Huh? Okay, so in this context, we also call it banyan some case, in some cases. Okay, okay, back to our topic today. Okay, today we're going to talk about heel spur. So as I mentioned, today we're going to talk about two types of heel spurs. Okay, because when people tell me heel spurs, right, we also don't know where they refer to. Oh, is it a top part or is it a bottom part? So now today I'm telling you, top part or bottom part also we call it heel because it happened on the heel. Mm. Okay, so now if it happens at the top part, okay, which is the Achilles tendon area, okay, so that's the Achilles heel spur, okay, or Achilles tendon heel spur, or some people call it calcified, calcified Achilles tendon, okay, or Achilles tendon eye piece, or all refers, or all refers to the same structure, talking about the Achilles tendon, okay, and the spurs. The sharp point eh, where you can see in the red, red color the sharp point the spurs grow into the Achilles tendon okay and another type of spur is a sole spur at the sole at the bottom or some people call it the heel spur or some people call it the plantar spur okay so all the names is just referring to that the spur is happening at the bottom of your heel all right and again at the bottom of the heel, the spurs grow into some soft tissues at the bottom of the heel. All right, so when people tell me heel spur, I always ask them, which spur are you referring to? Okay, near your Achilles or at the bottom? All right? Okay, so next. Questions? You can just comment. Okay, so today we're going to discuss, huh? okay, the, these two spurs, how do they happen? Okay, we talk about the first spur first, okay, which is the Achilles heel spur. Okay, Achilles heel spur, okay, we just go back to the previous slide. Huh? So Achilles heel spur is the one happened at the bottom one, top bottom, I'm uh, sorry, top up there one, okay, the red cover, Achilles heel spur. Okay, so Achilles heel spur normally is because tight soleus muscle. Okay, if you ask me soleus, if what is soleus, uh, Ben? Okay, so soleus is a part of our calf muscle. All right, so if you look at our calf, the two calves okay so soleus is one of the deeper calf muscles okay and it works as a stabilizer now the most important you know most important if you have an x-ray showing that you have this Achilles heel spur remember you need to learn how to stretch the soleus muscle okay I think my next slide yes okay so my my role is to find, find out what caused your spur at the Achilles then my second rule is teach you how to stretch. Okay, so now these are the three easier way to stretch your soleus muscle. Okay, so let's go to the first slide first, the first photo first. Huh? Now first photo, we are stretching the left soleus. Soleus is a deep muscle. Huh? I always say soleus is a deep muscle. So therefore to stretch the soleus, right? Okay, you can put your leg on the wall in that way, in that mode and make sure that your knee is in bending mode okay knee bent ankle upward so the front okay, part uh? is the front part is the one we are stretching yes the front leg the front leg is the one that we are stretching okay so according to the first photo the front leg on the left the left leg the front leg is the one that we are trying to stretch okay 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 so whoever is scared that they cannot remember all these photos how ah uh? shuhei what can we do ah uh? Ask them to so if you want the slide shows, ah, uh, you can just yeah, comment yeah, yeah. slides. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you just comment slides. Okay. I will show it to Jay or show him may will send to everyone. <laughs> okay. So okay, so okay, so let's there are a few ways to stretch. Okay. Now second way is, uh, refer to the second diagram. Second way. Now this second way is the same position like the first one. But the leg, we are stretching from the leg behind, but make sure that the leg behind is in the bent mode knee bent mode. okay knee bent mode so actually basically right you are still doing the same thing like the first diagram but the leg behind you must bend it okay so that's where you can hit your soleus muscle again everyone soleus muscle is a deep muscle yeah okay that's why it's a little bit not easy to stretch on it okay you need some certain techniques to stretch onto it okay or oh, third diagram my lazy way which is my favorite way Okay, straight away squat down. Asian squat. Straight away. Yes, Asian squat. Yes, Asian squat. Okay, straight away squat down. Now, 
this squatting right there are two photos there isn't it so if you find that you can't fully squat okay you can do the first guy one your leg open partially your leg partially open a little bit okay modified asian squat okay now if you think you are flexible enough you can go to the second photo which is the ladies one okay the full with the legs are closed okay so this is my favorite actually this is my favorite exercise for my clients with back pain knee pain as well as calf tightness uh, solace tightness okay so next right okay next so if okay what is the second cause that caused the Achilles heel spur again uh, if your heel spur happens Achilles heel spur happens on only one leg that means what your body is putting a lot of weight onto that particular leg we call it a weight bearing leg uh? so second cause is because there's an uneven weight bearing okay of your body system okay your body is choosing to put or loading one leg heavier and one leg lighter okay so in another way we say is uh, another leg maybe is taking mc or what okay so therefore loading a lot more on the op uh, opposite leg okay and this will cause or resulting in at least huge spur all right now let's look into the reason uh, why our body choose to have an uneven weight bearing okay so again we go back to this uh, uh this slide uh. so now those who, who who follow us since the first fb live right so you'll notice this slide is very familiar very, very familiar okay actually again when we have an uneven weight bearing it gives us a lot of problems oh uh. okay so now from this photo right from this both photos also are uh, also the same one so when you have uh, your pelvic is one-sided okay either high or low doesn't matter when you have one pelvic one-sided your loading always become different okay your loading will have more on the certain leg it can be on the same leg or it can be on the opposite leg okay later i'll teach everyone how to find it okay so this is one answer okay now therefore scoliosis patients or scoliosis clients okay take care okay in the way but when you have a scoliosis okay a lot of people will work on you from your spine so actually we will also work on you from your leg because scoliosis does not affect your spine only it also affect from you from the pelvic and all the way down to your heel okay for scoliosis patient oh and then um thirdly okay what causes your unable weight bearing one-sided tightness of the itb it band okay so now next okay you want to help you want me to help you to find out where is the itb tightness okay itb is a is a name of a tissue uh, along your side of your thigh okay so our next slide will tell you already so let's look for the culprit okay now again whoever follow our first facebook live huh? so you will notice this is also a similar sim almost a similar uh, slides okay itb is a muscle or is a structure at the side of your thighs okay we have two legs right we have two legs right yeah okay so the two legs at the side okay i don't know whether the camera can see can see yes okay, okay. okay at the side here okay that is where where your itb muscles run so we have a left itb you have a right itb okay so if you're wearing shorts it's a lot more easier okay you can refer to my third third bottom uh photo because if you're very short you can see a groove okay a groove okay that is where your itb is all right now itb normally works to stabilize our hip so therefore if you have one sided of itb tightness okay that's where it will cause an un un weight bearing uh, uneven weight bearing so therefore very simple put your two hands at the side of your itb yeah? all right and then you feel and then you ask yourself okay which one is more painful all right the painful one is telling you that that side itb is a lot more stiffer okay so therefore that side itb you need to stretch it okay again okay so today we're going to teach you how to stretch the itb okay if you want to know how to stretch the itb okay you can leave a comment okay you leave a comment on itb then we will send you a link okay we will send you a link okay we'll send you a link to show you how to stretch the itb all right yeah? so should we clear huh? yeah. yeah so those who are joining are uh, just plus plus one or help us to share out uh. yeah thanks for joining thanks for joining so tell yes. us you are Hello. here yeah okay so my name is ben so i have my moderator here shuhui 
Okay, so today we're going to talk to, to go to talk about a uh, heel spur. Yeah. Okay, so now we are halfway. We are talking about the Achilles heel spur. Okay, Achilles heel spur is indicating the uh, the spur which behind happen behind top of the ankle. All right. Now we finish the first two courses. Now come to the third course. Okay, high heel. All right. So when we talk about high heel, I think most likely we are indicating ladies lah. Okay. So again. Let me clarify. Ben Physio never stops our client to wear high heel. All right, but you need to know after high heel, what is the changes in your body, so that you can do some modification after you remove your high heel, so that you don't suffer all those pain or those discomfort. Okay, so here I'm telling you that is yes, high heels will lead to your Achilles. Muscles to go into shorten, sorry, Achilles tendon to go into shorten, all right, and will leads to Achilles heel spur. So again, if you are a high heel person, what can you do? Stretch. stretch. Okay. Yes, stretch. Okay. If you are lazy, stretch. Asian, Asian squat. squat. <laughs> yes, easy. You can do it anywhere. All right. Okay. Now, who else suffers Achilles spur? Okay. Type of occupation. Okay, teachers, lecturers, promoters, chefs. So, what are their similarity between all these occupation? They need to stand a lot. Okay, either you're on high heel or not high heel. Are you barefoot or not barefoot? But need to stand a lot. Those who stands a lot, all right, you have the high prevalence to suffer Achilles heel spur, because when we're standing, soleus is the muscles to work. Again. So what's the solution, ah? Stretch. Oh, so good. Okay. So if you want the slides, ah, you can ah. comment slides, ah. Yes. I thought you want to change. I thought you want to change change occupation. Change I'm... job. Okay. Is... No. Yeah. Okay. Future never ask people to change. Athletes. Athletes. How about yes? athletes, like runners? Okay, so far for runners, uh, normally they they do have Achilles heel spur, but I think they have a higher tendency to have another one, the sole spur. Alright, so in this context, we focus on all these uh, who stands a lot because we believe soles, we use a lot of soles in standing. Okay, unless those um, uh, yeah, a lot of standing. Okay, but of course, runners, you may also suffer Achilles heel. Here we are talking about those who have a higher prevalence. Yes. Okay. Okay. And last one, standing posture. Now, there is one type of standing posture who have a high tendency to have Achilles heel spur. All right, we call it um, center of gravity is a falling backward. Okay, um, very rare to see these kind of cases, but there is. Okay, some. Okay, I'll show you the photo, then everyone will understand more. Huh? How does it look like? Okay. Eh, this one, Achilles. Okay. So standing posture and with the center of gravity falling backward. Okay, now this kind of people, right? They have easily, they easily they have uh, this uh, Achilles, Achilles tendon overbuilt or tightness as well as soleus tightness. Okay, now we look at the photos uh, or diagram on the right hand side, which indicating three photos. Okay, now how do you know if you have this uh, center of gravity falling backward? Okay, ask someone besides you. To check on your heel shape oh we call it your heel shape huh? now out of these three photos right in, the, in these three photos the three heels huh, that we display now the second one in the middle one is the type of the heel that you will have if your are of your standing posture with cog center of gravity falling backward okay the second one uh, the second one is the heel that you will have the shape of your heel that you will have okay if your center of gravity is falling backward Okay, very clear, huh? Okay, now if you have this kind of heel, yes, you can you belong to this cat category whereby your center of gravity is falling backward and you have very high prevalence to have soleus tightness, Achilles spur, or you already have it. So if you have already have it, you can follow our exercises, okay, to solve your own problem. It works, okay. Trust me, it works. Okay, if you don't work, call us. Okay, it works. All right. So mostly people with long-standing occupation will most likely to have the second. Yes, yes, they are. They are. Okay. Okay. 
Now, next, we're talking about um, heel spur at the bottom, or plantar spur, or sole spur. Spur, we are talking about spur. Huh? Okay, some people will ask me, hey, how about plantar fasciitis? Yes, we will talk about it later. All right, now we are talking about spur first, because today my topic is about spur. All right, now, heel spur at the bottom there, okay? Maybe we go back to the hold on, uh, first slide. There. Heel spur, now we are talking about the second spur, which is at the bottom, lies at the bottom of your feet. Okay. okay. The causes to this bottom of the feet to develop into spur, number one, calf again. Calf, okay? But this round, we are talking about other calf, like tibialis posterior and gastrocnemius, okay? So if you don't know these muscles, it doesn't matter. The most important, you know where is calf muscles, okay? Now, these tight calf muscles will lead to the bottom sole spur okay so therefore tight muscles we need to stretch okay how to stretch them there we have three we have three photos okay so again now number one photos number one the first photos on the left huh? so you're trying stretching your calf muscles on the right leg sorry on the left leg sorry on the left leg yeah the front leg again is on the front leg whereby your 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 anchor your front leg against a wall okay or against a standing wall okay or you want to choose to have a second photo or second stretching which you are trying to stretch your leg behind okay you are trying to stretch your leg behind okay now then you will ask me no hey ben since now you give the photo right for the solace one nah, it's also about, about this right now this one is also about this how I know which one I stretch correctly or not. Eh? Okay? Now, the difference eh, between these two stretches is when you are trying to stretch the current muscles, gastrocnemius and the tip pose, the knee has to be in a straight mode. Okay? The knee has to be in a straight mode. Earlier, when you try to stretch the soleus, your knee is in a bent mode. B-E-N-T, bent. Okay? It's in a bent mode. Okay? So hopefully, that distinguishes a little bit what's the difference between these two. If yet you still can't get, you still can't get it, and you wish to have this photo, what can you do? Comment slide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. comment <laughs> slide. We'll get the slideshows. Yes. Yeah. Okay. We then we'll send you the slideshow. Okay, because the slideshow will be something as what we display now. Okay, and then you you can uh, follow like that. Okay. So those who are so used to do yoga, okay, yoga pilates, then you have you may have you have you may have seen this third pose. Okay, we call it downward dog. Oh, it's also a good stretching for the gastro and the tip pose. Okay, so you also can try and see. All right. So if you don't like the third pose, which you find is too challenging, you can go proceed with the first one or the second one. Okay. Okay. All right. Now some people. Oh, oh sorry. Okay. So first cause of the plantar or the heel spur is because of the tight calf. The calf muscle is tight. Okay, which is we referring to these two. Now, second reason why you have a heel spur at the bottom of your sole is because you have a very open supinated feet or tight arch feet or plantar fascia, very tight. Okay, we are referring, everything is talking about the same thing. We are talking about the same fact. High arch, over supinated or tight plantar fascia, we are talking about the same thing. Okay, so tight, again, tight muscles, we have to stretch them. So how to stretch? Now, number one, you can do like the first photo on your left. Okay. You do something like this, pull your toes upward towards yourself. Okay, pull your toes upward towards yourself. Okay, whereby you can feel the stretch at the bottom of the feet. Now, whereby you can feel the stretch at the bottom of the feet. Okay. So that's a that's a one way lah, whereby you self-help. Okay, or second way, I think some people would prefer tennis ball. Okay, roll a tennis ball. Okay, if you are abused type, you like to be abused. Besides tennis ball, what else you can try? Spiky ball. Okay, you can try spiky ball. Okay, roll your feet, roll your soul on the spiky ball. It also will give you some gentle massage and give you some relief. Okay, so Shuhei, if I'm an abusive one, can I put a durian underneath my soul? Uh, better not. Like. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, all right, everyone. So you can either do your own stretch, okay, by using your, your toes, huh? I mean, using your fingers to pull the toes upward. Or you can use a tennis ball to roll, or you can put a spiky ball. 
okay all these measures can help you to loosen the plantar muscles plantar means the bottom muscles okay not the plantar that we eat but this is the plantar of the bottom muscle so should they put the most of their weight on it i guess why not if you are abuse abusive type you prefer you like to have more pain more pressure yes you are allowed to put more weight on it okay so it won't further harm uh, normally it won't because a uh, human has a reflex okay called pain inhibition mm -hmm. all right so if you do too much your body will hold back okay now the third case okay you have a bottom spur reason you are a flat fit person or you are over over pronated fit person okay so now today over here we're not going to talk about this uh, over fit or a uh, flat fit or over pronation because we have talked about it our uh, previous life so if you wish to know about the previous uh, about this topic you can go back to our previous slide huh? we already we, i think it's we, it's available right in the facebook yep, it's okay available. yeah all right so that's because this one is another longer story okay we talk about system we talk about system and system we also talk about coordination we talk about low tone we talk about uh clumsiness okay so it's a very huge topic okay which we're not going to touch it here today and lastly okay back to your question just now suhui type of activities because according to what we have seen right most of our clients who are runners sprinters skipper golfers they easily to have this uh bottom spur or heel spur at the bottom okay so again the those activities runners skippers sprinters right again they use a lot of their calf muscles so therefore i always encourage them to stretch their calf before and after their game okay runners okay runners if you want to have a good run good performance this is your exercise okay i'm a runner so this is what i do okay before and after my run okay okay next okay before we talk about our insole right okay how to differentiate between the bottom heel pain and plantar fasciitis this is the most 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 common questions being asked by our clients or patients okay how to differentiate am i having spur or am i having plantar fasciitis okay now two ways okay now whoever with your feet now this is where you can check it now okay check it in front of the monitor if you're not sure show us take the photo and show us okay so number one palpation palpate okay sorry i have to show you my feet you can see my feet ah? so we can see my feet a little bit up Oops, like this <laughs> can ah? okay okay so if there is a <clears throat> okay palpation if there is a heel spur heel spur okay your pain will be right at the bottom here this is your heel spur one can see yeah Shuhei? okay this is where your heel spur one okay heel spur pain palpation if you're having plantar fasciitis we call it pf lah, huh? pf plantar fasciitis your pain will be at your near your arch there near your arch there this is your arch okay and at the bottom here where the bone is okay this is the area okay if you are having a plantar fasciitis so i put a p f plantar fasciitis okay the location and the palpation are slightly different heel spur normally is right at the bottom of your heel all right and the plantar fasciitis is normally pain is at this point okay so this is where the biggest difference yes maybe a little closer oh the my feet ah huh? not my <laughs> face <laughs> can see yeah can yeah. see okay heel spur plantar fasciitis heel spur <laughs> plantar fasciitis okay okay thanks for showing <laughs> all right so this is how we differentiate of course i got x-ray then don't need susah susah law okay if i got x-ray don't need susan susan law if you don't x-ray yes this is how we identify either you're having a spur or you're having a plantar fasciitis okay so ben patients ben bring x-ray ben i got a spur how ah? can physio help me to remove my spur ah? okay here i'm telling you no answer is no 
Okay, no matter where is your spur, at your spine, at your hip, at your knee, I'm sorry to say that, although I congrats you uh, that you are living, but I'm sorry to say that I can't remove your spur. Okay, but, okay, then why I come for physio? All right, so why do I come for physio? Okay, num very simple, number one. Okay, we change your perception. Number one, I will let you know first. My fact is, out of 10 people who has spurs are confirmed, only one out of 20 people, sorry, only one out of 20 people who have spurs will have foot pain. That means what? At another 19, you may not have pain. Okay, so that means what? Your spurs is not the cause of your pain. Your pain can come from other structure besides your spur. Okay? Clear? Huh? You, you get me clear? Yeah. Okay? So when you come to physios, number one, I change your perception first. Okay? Because why? Have pain, not necessary to have. Oh, sorry. Have spur, not, not necessary to have pain. Okay? Reason? Only 5%. Okay? Out of 20 people, one people have the foot pain. Okay? According to research, huh, this one again. So, therefore, how physio can help? Do exercise, like as we advise us now. Okay? So, if your occupational hazard one, do something. Do something during your work. Okay? So that you can avoid it or you can reduce your pain. Alright? Now, another thing that we can do. Yes, sorry? Yeah, no, no. Someone okay. to know why we got heel pain. Yeah. So I think she meant come to show to help help assess. Yep. Okay. Why? Or you can self assess first of all, like what, what what we showed just now. Yeah, otherwise yes, you have to come for physio and check and check and see. Okay? So Okay? So again, physios change your perception to convince you that your spurs not necessary is the one causing your foot pain. Okay, no doubt, uh, your spurs are already there, but it's not necessarily the one causing the foot pain. Okay, now, worst come to worst, if really your spurs is the one giving you pain, which you are the only one person uh, out of the 20 people, okay, what can you do? Or whoever with the spurs, and you don't want your spurs to get worse, okay, what can you do? Now, this is what we can suggest, okay, orthotic. So this orthotic right, is something we call insole. All right, insole. So when people have this insole, right, you don't see it one. Why? Eh? Because we wear it inside our shoe. Okay, so we have three types of insole so far. Okay, we have three types of insole. Can you see, yes, yeah, Suway? A little bit. Closer? Yeah, upward. Okay, so we have uh, this one. We call it three quarter length because it's not a full length. And then we have this one, full length, full one. And then we have this one, this one for ladies, slim fit, okay? This one for ladies, okay? Now, three-quarter length and full length, they are, what do you call it? Their depth is a little bit more, okay? They have a heel cup, okay? They have a heel cup and their depth is a little bit more for the three-quarter and the full one. Now, for the slim fit one, your heel cup will be slightly shallow, okay? Reason, this one for you to put into your heel, your heel shoe. Okay, any huge shoe. Okay, so that it has to be thinner, it has to be smaller. Okay, so now how my orthotic, sorry? For high heel shoes, is it? Yes, for high heel shoes. Okay, but okay, now your high heel shoe has to be slowly closed, uh, slightly closed so that you can, this thing can stick inside there. Okay, or of course your working shoes, OL, office lady, your office shoe. Okay, now how does this orthotic help? Okay, so our previous life also talked about the heel cup. This heel cup will help you to hold your, your heel, okay, in the shape. So that it's not over pronated, it's neither over supinated. Okay, we have an arch, we have an arch, okay, this arch is holds you about 4 degree, okay, with um, uh, to hold your arch at 4 degree. So it still suits those who uh, with uh, flat feet or with a high arch feet, okay. And then, uh, of course, this one, uh, quarter, three quarter one also have the same thing. Now, more important, the trick is here. Do you see this? At the heel, can you see yeah, Su Hui? Okay. Bit. A little bit. Can you see this yellow color? Ah? Yeah, can see, can see. Okay, now this yellow color, right? Okay, is from the heel, ah, 
from the this from this uh from this auto tick right yellow color okay this one white color okay now this yellow color you can peel off one see you can peel off okay i can peel it off so now why i peel it off huh? okay now when i peel it off i form a hole here i form a hollowness here this hollowness is for you to when you put your heel on it it gives you a room a special vip room for your heel bone for your heel spur okay heel spur always have pain when come to contact so therefore we remove this so that you create a vip hotel five star room for your heel spur so that you don't put contact direct pressure on the heel spur okay so therefore whoever wants to buy heel uh, insoles make sure that your insole also have this thing all right make sure your insole also have this thing okay now for um i, I remember right the previous live uh, there was one someone who asked me how to choose insole okay i remember that okay now i think he is a runner so he was asking any insole suitable for runner okay listen uh, if you are still here okay runner in, uh, insoles that suitable for runner normally recommend is a full length full length one reason very simple if i give you a three quarter three quarter uh, this is not full uh, three quarter when you run what happened to this insole you run okay you insole run inside you are running outside okay so therefore we encourage you to get a full length and again full length one night uh, it has higher flexibility okay three quarter one has lesser flexibility or uh, full length one you have higher flexibility especially at the metatarsal all right metatarsal side this is the region because this region is where you run when you run you need your metatarsal to have this flex uh, extension yeah okay so if you are a runner and you are looking for a good insole for your running shoes this is the running shoe and uh, this is the insole that you want to get in uh, full full length okay now second point this full length right can see your shoe weight can you see the lines here yeah okay can you see the lines here now this line is for you to use a scissor scissor to cut the lines to suit your shoe okay so that it can fit your shoe okay so that's all okay so this is the insole long uh, full length full length insole for a runner okay and there is something in lines here for you to cut across of course there are still few more gadgets here all right so today we don't really talk about the other gadgets we only talk to you talk to you about the secret room here the vip five star hotel room okay which is for it to cater the shoe spur okay yeah you can see yeah okay so same thing the slim fit for the ladies or, or office lady ladies teachers teachers lecturers lecturers teachers or chef or chef maybe you may not use this uh chef maybe you use this okay there's also heel for you to detach okay for a vip vip five star room all right you can detach okay so okay um before we end okay any question okay so the, the, the port the three over four and the length Quarter, uh, three quarter yes uh, three quarter length one that one is more for those who are long standing not yes so much for long standing shoes. for office shoes okay mm -hmm. student shoes okay for uh yeah for shoes for close shoes now my advice uh, okay i mean i will not say advice really uh, this is the rules uh, when you want to buy a pair of shoes to fit your orthosis now i ask you you buy shoe first or you buy orthotic first buy shoe. no you buy orthotic first okay you buy orthotic first okay so show you purposely yeah okay you buy orthotic first. because why after you buy this orthotic which suits your shoes bring this orthotic to your shoe shop okay so that you can buy the shoe that can fit this orthotic in yeah okay so it's another way now you have to buy this first then you bring this to your shoe to your shoe shop okay because why by having this you will make your shoes requirements slightly bigger than normal okay if you're normally it's a six and a half okay you may need a size of seven it depends it depends okay it depends what type of shoe you buy as well all right so therefore my advice not advisory this is a rule terms condition if you go to a, you, if you want to buy a insole for your own shoes you buy orthotic first orthotic first then only you buy your shoes next okay so the yep. full length one will be will be giving up right a yes. Will be yes. Giving up. yes 
enzyme is giving out is giving out a full length insole. Okay, a full length insole. Okay. Yep. Okay. So, uh, any questions so far that I need to answer or? Uh, which brand of the shoe would you recommend to go with this design or topic? Oh, doesn't matter. Any brand that you like. Any brand shoes that you like. Yeah, it can be Bata shoe, it can be scroll shoe, whatever. It doesn't matter. Okay? Yep, anything? So, so again, everyone, mm -hmm. whoever just come in, okay, today's you may have the chance okay to win this auto we are really giving away yeah we are really giving away yeah we are not telling lie yeah so we are really giving away one pair of this uh one pair yeah? one pair of this exact some people will say oh maybe ben you all will give one one side and then ask you to buy another side no uh, we are giving one pair okay we are giving one pair of a uh, full length of a full length okay of a full length auto okay so whoever whoever just join us okay listen carefully to the question Okay, listen carefully to the question. Then we will give you a question after this. Uh. Okay, before that, we any other question uh, that we need to go through? Yeah, just my question. If uh -huh. we already have our shoes, what shoes? Uh, so uh -huh. this automatic can easily fit in it? Hopefully. Hopefully it can fit. Why not? Okay, uh -huh. hopefully. Because again, it depends on what kind of, uh, what kind of sports shoes you're using. Uh. Uh, some sports shoes are a little bit uh, shorter in the in in height. So it becomes very, very compressed. Uh, if your small shoe is quite lengthy one or quite high, uh, taller in height one, then most likely this one can fit in. We then ask, uh, how to wash and clean this one? Yeah. Okay, this one normally we don't wash. Uh. Okay, now what we do is, okay, because you see uh, this is a soft cushion. Uh. This is a little bit soft cushion. Okay, so normally what we do is uh, use a damp cloth. So you just wipe off and do not put under the direct sun. Do not put under direct sun. Okay, just you can put it under the normal fan of uh, aircon so that it dry under the room temperature. Yeah, okay. And this autotic also is a uh, moldable, heat moldable. So by using the heat, uh, it can help you to form the arch a lot more higher. Again, standard is a 4 degree arch. Okay, but this one is more heat moldable. By using extra heat, it can still help you to uh, increase, the, increase the arch support. Yes. Okay. Okay, so those who are still joining us, can you just comment below and show yep. you you are still here? Yeah. Because we're going so, to ask the question. Yep. Okay. So I'm going to ask question. Huh? Okay. So everyone. Okay. Who is the, who is the, uh, what is the brand? Okay. Of the autotic that we are we are recommending today. Okay. What is the brand that we are recommending today? The brand of the autotic that we are recommending today. Okay. So send us the answer below, okay? Send us the answer below, and then uh, we'll draw a ballot tonight, and we'll, we will we will PM you for the winner, okay? And uh, for those who wants the our slide, our presentation slides, okay, is uh, you can you can get it for free. So you just comment below, okay? Um, comment slides, okay? Then we'll send you the slide. So I want to congrats uh, our last last winner is uh. Ching. Mm -hmm. Congrats. Good. Okay. But we are yet to deliver to her yet, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Review. Okay. <laughs> yes. Okay. So is there any other question? Okay, anyone? I think. Okay. Otherwise, that's all. Okay, so the answer in this slide. The answer is in this slide okay so take care of your feet okay the feet is an important one okay especially uh, those um insoles uh, orthopedics uh, podiatrists fit is where the whole fundam fundamental to your whole system all right so our foot deserves a good pair of shoes okay our foot deserves a good pair of shoes all right thank you bye bye Thanks thank you so much sharing thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you.